Imagine this, a cozy Easter morning, you and your loved one snuggling up in your handmade Easter jammies. Join me on a journey of creativity and sewing as we dive into making adorable matching PJs, the perfect touch for your Easter celebration. I don't know about you, but Easter morning is always filled with chocolate, of course, but also staying in our PJs until well after lunch. Watching my kids run around, finding those eggs in their me-maids fills me with such warmth and joy and creativity. To help you create this same magic, I'm going to show you how to easily adapt any t-shirt pattern, or you could use a store board as well, into the super cute bunny PJ set that will be fun for the whole family. For those that don't know me, I'm Megan from Sew and Tell Australia, a sewing blog where I share sewing education, video tutorials and pattern reviews to help you become a more confident and creative sewer. Now before I forget, make sure you stick around till the end where I will share with you how to get your hands on my how to improve your stretch sewing in 30 minutes or less guide. It's a very good valuable resource. So this tutorial is all about making a fun Easter gift for you and your family and friends. To start with, you will need your favourite t-shirt pattern. I'm going to be using the Peekaboo Pattern Shop Kids Essential Tee, which I'll link in the description below, but you can use any t-shirt pattern. I like to start from scratch as it just makes it a lot easier to apply the heat transfer vinyl and to manoeuvre the 3D elements on the front, though you could use a pre-made shirt if you're not confident making your own. For the PJ bottoms, I have used the Patterns for Pirates Walk the Plank PJ Pants, which is free, which is always nice, and comes in both adult and kid sizes, so I'll make sure I link that one below as well. The fabrics I'm using are a woven fabric for the bottoms, which was lovely gifted from Frankie Bear Fabrics, and I also used it in the ear accent. I'll make sure I link Frankie Bear's details below. And for the tops, I used a stretch cotton fabric that is a beautiful four-way stretch cotton lycra. To make the bunny face, I've used heat transfer vinyl or HTV. And the bunny face I bought from Etsy. So again, I'll link that one or I'll link the file below. But for now, let's dive in and make this Easter unforgettable. I've already cut out the bottoms. So I was going to do pants, but I didn't have enough fabric to do the same for both my son and my daughter. So I've got this such, I just love this fabric. It's so, so cute. Uh, so I've cut the pants out, but I'm going to quickly cut out my top. So I'm using the Peekaboo Pattern Shop Kids Essential Tee. I'll make sure that I link it below. And I can't remember where I got this fabric from, but it will match well with Gemma's peach one. So I'm going to do the scoop neck in um, in the top and I'm doing a size 4 for Ted which is a little bit bigger than he needs but who doesn't love comfy comfy PJs. So I will cut all this out. This is using a projector. If you're new to projector sewing I will link one of my blogs in the description below as well that you can have a look at and there's some really great resources. Um, I also have a galvanized steel mat under here and these are magnets so this is my favorite favorite thing to cut with and I'm a big fan of a rotary cutter too. Again I can link all these things below. You can always check out my resources page which has a lot of this stuff as well. But I will finish cutting out the top and then we can get started with personalizing it with our really cute bunny motif. But that's the first bit done. I love my projector, so my projector. So I'll finish cutting all this out and then we can get moving on with the personalizing. I've cut all my pieces out now, so I've got my front, I've got my backs, my two sleeves and my neckband. I've also cut just two long bits that are going to be the ears, so I'll put them aside for the moment because I want to do my face. Now what I first am going to do is check sort of how wide I want the face to be. So I think I probably want it about five inches wide. And then whatever that kind of works out to be height wise, I'll be happy with. So I'm going to take, um, take you over to my cutter and we will cut out the five inch wide design. Got my design up here. 
so I've highlighted it and I want to make that a width of 5 and that brings it to a height of 2.6 which will be fine so now I'm just going to bring it down to the corner I've got my uh, mat here we're going to go shiny side down and just place it in the corner and I'll load this one up I love how easy the HTV is to personalize everything like it's just it's so fun and watching it do it all it's very satisfying that's all done so I can unload it and now I'm just going to weed it I like to put a it's called an auto weed box around it so that it just does this you know cuts a, a rectangle around it so if you did have a bigger piece of vinyl, you're not wasting it. Like it, it cuts it around the design so you know exactly where it's going to be. So I find that really handy. And so I will now cut around that and let's take it back to our front and we can make sure we're happy with where it's sitting. I like to use these acrylic guides that I got off Amazon. I will link it below but they're just really handy for sort of finding out the best place to place your cutout. So I'm using the toddler version because obviously my son is a toddler. It looks really cute. Let's make sure I don't have any other bits. And then we'll place it down. Just kind of check if we're happy with the placement. Just move it up a tiny bit. And then what I'm gonna do is just check what I think about these ears. So I'm going to cut that in half. Just kind of have a little bit of a look. So I think that's probably going to look pretty good. And then all I did for the ears was just cut an ear shape basically. So I made sure I had like a bit of a, a rounded tip. this cute little bunny shape so then all I'm going to do to make sure I've matched it is lay this one on top I might even make it a tiny tiny bit thinner and there are my two little bunny ears so now all I have to do is cut two from the bunny fabric from this fabric but what I'll do now is I'm going to adhere my HTV to my top and then I can do the next bit. The thing I like about doing all this now is that you don't have the bulk of the rest of the garment so you know when you're doing it in the making stage instead of having to buy pre-made t-shirts and sort of fuss around with making sure you're not getting any seams in it and things you can do it when it's flat like this is my flat piece I'm starting from scratch I can make sure it's beautiful if I make a mistake I'm only wasting a front I'm not wasting an entire t-shirt so it really just makes a really big difference when you're able to make your own garments and really you know start from scratch so I'm going to put this in my heat press and then we'll come back and do the next bit we've got our motif on there which is looking super cute and I went ahead and cut out my ears so I have one each so this is what they're going to look like oh Look how cute that's going to be. I'm so excited for these matching PJs. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to put this aside for a minute. And what I'm going to do is get these and I'm going to turn them right sides together. Let's make sure I've got them the right way. So we'll go right sides together like this. The same on this one. Yep. So knit fabric can tend to curl, so it's just sort of a case of teasing it out. And then we can clip around here if you want to. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to go over to our normal domestic machine and we're going to sew around the edges. So let's do that now. I've got it all clipped and ready. I've actually got my walking foot on. I find having the walking foot on makes a huge difference when you're sewing with knits. So again, I can link one below if you want to um, look at a walking foot for yourself. And then I've got my Schmetz 
stretch needles in and a 9014, which I find is pretty good for most things. So I'm just going to start by back stitching. Oh, my stitch length is on three and I'm just doing a normal straight stitch because we don't actually need this to stretch at all. So I don't have to worry about trying to get a particular stretch stitch in. And then all, all I'm doing is I'm probably sewing with oh, less than three eighths of an inch um, seam allowance. Just kind of going close to, but not super close to the edge. And all I want to do is just follow it round because I want to make sure that I'm catching everything. And then as I get to the tip, I'm actually going to put my needle in the down position, bring it across, go three or four stitches across, and then come back down. And then I come back down this side as well. So we're going to do this to both sides, or both pieces, sorry. And then I'll show you the next step. For this next part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pinking shears and I'm just going to cut around the edge to trim it all. And I'm cutting sort of close to but not through the stitches. This just reduces the bulk of the seams. So we'll go around. I got a little bit close on that one, but it should be okay. And how the pinking shears work is it cuts the woven at a cross grain. So it helps to prevent fraying. I mean, we're going to turn this and top stitch it anyway, but it's just, it's really good to have a pair of pinking shears. I will link my favorite ones in the comments. Now I've got a chopstick, handy chopstick, and all we're doing is turning our ears the right way. And then we'll get our chopstick and just be careful because the last one I did, I poked a hole in it. So we just want to sort of pull that through and then we'll finger roll and sort of press the edges. But we are then going to take it over to our ironing board and give it a really, really good steam press. So I'll do the same to the other one, then I'll give it a good iron and we'll bring it back and do the next step. Here are our two ears, lovely pressed. So I gave them a really good steam press. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch all the way around and just sort of neaten off those edges. So I might actually just give this a little clip because we will top stitch the bottom bit closed as well. And then once we've done that, we can bring it over to our front panel and start to work out where we want our ears. But it's starting to take shape pretty quickly. Same as before, I've just got it on a stitch length of three and all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna back stitch a little bit and then we're gonna go all the way around. I like to sort of top stitch a third of an, um, sorry, one eighth of an inch from the edge, which is about two to three millimeters. And we're just going all the way around up to the top. Again, I'll leave my needle in the down position. Go across a couple and then come back down the other side. And then the last thing that I'm going to do, I'll back stitch a little bit, but I'm just going to flip it to the side. I want to just sort of finish off this edge. So go across, back stitch a little. And then that is our ear done. So I will do my other one and then we can attach it to our top. To finish off and attach these, what we need to do, you can sort of have a play with roughly where you want them to go. So I want it to be like that, but we actually need to flip it like this. And then what we're gonna do, once you're kind of happy with it, you're going to flip them up so that they're on an angle. I'll bring it down a bit so you can see. So we kind of want to flip it up 
like this, so that they're sitting like that. We're then going to pin it down like this. And then you can bring them back down again just to see, you know, if you're happy with how it's all looking still. But if you're happy, we're then going to go back to our machine and we're going to stitch these on here like this. And then we're going to fold it back on itself and we're going to do a single straight stitch on the top. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so we're starting on our ear here. I like to do a zigzag stitch and I reduce the stitch length down to one on my machine and I keep the width as five and then all I'm going to do is just gently start I'll do a tiny little back stitch but then I'm just letting the walking foot help feed it through I give it a little bit of pressure just to help it and when I get to the end I'll do a tiny little back stitch as well so that our ear looks like this and then we're going to fold it back on itself like so feed it back under and then I'm going back to my normal stitch and I am increasing the stitch length to three again and then I'm just going to start on one side with a tiny little back stitch and then go all the way to the other side, little back stitch. That's our, that's our little ear done. So we've got our little bunny ears done now. So I'm just going to trim off these threads. And then what I'm going to do is put this aside and we can start to work on our shorts but that is our bunny fronts this is a little bit off to the side I don't know what happened but I think it's kind of cute like it's gonna hang down anyway and bunny ears aren't really that symmetrical anyway are they so we're gonna put this off to the side and grab our PJ pants and the first thing we're gonna do with our PJ pants is we're actually gonna take it over to the iron we're gonna fold up the hem to the wrong side and we're going to give a memory press. So a memory press is just when you give it a quick press to kind of give it a bit of a crease and then we will come back and do the next step. Now that I've done my memory fold I'm going to take my pants and fold them right sides together lining up the crotch and we will clip down here and then I'm going to take this over to my overlocker or serger and I'll surge down this side and I'll do the same to the other side as well. Got my two surged pieces here. So now what I'm going to do is turn one the right way out. And I'm actually going to load this one up like on my hand with the seam facing up. And I'm going to slip it into the other one matching up my crotch seams so that I've got them right sides together and I like to nest my seams so I have one seam going one way and one seam going the other way just to reduce that bulk and then we're going to clip and line up the crotch curves so if they don't line up then you've done something wrong so I would just clip along here and the back curve is always going to be higher because it needs that extra fabric to be able to cover your bum. Okay, so I now have this. I'll just trim these little tails off. They'll get trimmed anyway when we serge it, but just so you can see. So we've got our two legs inside each other, like so, right sides together. And now I'm going to take it over to my overlocker and I'm going to surge around this curve here and then I will bring it back and show you the next bit. All right, so I've surged this here. So now we can pull it all out and we'll have a look. Woof, look, beautiful cross point. And our shorts are starting to take shape. 
So the next thing we're going to do is to attach our elastic waistband. So I've got my elastic here, which is just some waistband elastic, and I'm going to first um, overlap it and then I will zigzag stitch down here just on my normal domestic machine and then we're going to quarter it and quarter our waistband before we attach the elastic. So I'll quickly just uh, zigzag down here and then I can show you what we do with the quartering. So I've sewn my waistband elastic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half with the back seam. Get a pin and just mark it at the front here. So I now know my two half points and then I'm going to line up my front and back so I get my side quarter points. And I'll pop pins in there as well. And the reason that we quarter is so that we get a nice even um, amount between each point and it just makes it a lot easier to uh, stitch it on. So now I've got my front and back together. I'll mark my quarter here and I'll mark my quarter here. A lot of people skip this step and I really think it's a mistake because you just end up guessing how much to stretch it by and you know you end up with too much at the back and not enough at the front or like it just it doesn't look clean. So I then match up my quarter points and we're doing it on the inside. This is such a good pattern this one. I can't remember if I mentioned but it's actually a free pattern, the walk the plank. So I will of course link it in the description below. And the reason I then take the pins out is because I don't want to overlock my pins. So as you can see now we're just going to be stretching between each quarter. So I will take you over to my overlocker and we will attach our elastic. I like to start from the back so that I can see what I'm doing. And I just pop this in. And then all I'm doing is I like to hold the back so that it's nice and taut. And I'm holding the front. And I try not to cut off the elastic edge but sometimes it's inevitable. But I'm basically just trying to make sure that I'm lining up my raw edge and catching the elastic and the uh, material underneath. And we're done. This next part is pretty easy. We just fold it under and I like to kind of push it up a little bit into you know that crease and then I'm going to sew it from the inside so I like to put a pin here and then I'm just kind of stretching it out and finding another point sort of this quarter point here to put another pin in it just helps when you're sewing it and then I'll match up my front point because I know that is the front so I'm just folding that over again making sure it's really well nested into the corner into the top there and then on this side I'll just get out I knew I was gonna do that give it a little bit of a stretch and I'll put a pin here like so so now I'm gonna take it over to our normal machine and we're going to sew that elastic down. This is also where I will add my label. So I like to add little labels because my children don't understand what is the back if that doesn't have a label. So we'll pop that in and then we'll also be able to finish off our hems as well. So when we do our hems, I'll just trim this off. What I might actually do is I will just quickly run the edges through my overlocker to seal the edges so that we don't have raw edges. And then we're just folding these up on our memory crease that we created before. You can give it another press if you want to, but we'll fold these up and then we'll be able to hem these and then that will be our shorts part done. Got this all ready to go. I've got my label in here. I am just on 
normal stitches, straight stitch, a stitch length of three. And I will do a little back stitch to secure. And then I'm just going to stretch it between the quarters again or between the pins. Because this ensures that we won't get our threads snapping. So we're just stretching between. I kind of hold it at the back as well just to help feed it through. And again, we'll just finish with a little back stitch. And that is the elastic down. So now I'm going to do my hems. As I mentioned, I surged along the edge and I just gave it a quick press. So I'm going to go from the inside again so that I know that I'm catching it. And I will often sort of pick something to um, guide myself. So I'm going to kind of guide along this line here, as long as I'm kind of lining up to that. And then I'll just back stitch at the start again and do the other side as well. Here we have our completed shorts with our little label at the back. So I will put the size there so that I know, aren't they cute? Now that we finish this, we can go back to our bunny tops. So what we're going to do, we've got our front piece and we're going to get our back piece as well. And we're going to lay them right sides together. And what you need to do is you can just clip the shoulders. And then we're going to surge along the top of these shoulders. So I will surge these and then bring them back so that we can do our sleeves. We've surged our shoulder seams. So now what I do is I lay out my piece. I get my shoulders, make sure it's the right way. And I find the middle. Now it depends on if your shoulders have a front or a back. This one doesn't. But I fold them in half to find the middle. I will then line up my middle with my shoulder seam. I like to put a clip in and you've got to make sure you've got your right sides together. I will then link it around to one end and then the other end. And then what you want to make sure is that your curves are matching up. You kind of ease your shoulder seam into it. So I just pick it up and kind of match it up. Pop a clip in it. Same as this side. You shouldn't need to stretch it. So we'll clip it like that. And then what we're going to do is surge or overlock from this side all the way around to this side. And we'll do the same on the other side. So I'll go and do that and then bring it back and show you the next bit. We've attached both our sleeves. Look how cute it's starting to look. So what we're going to do now is turn it right sides together. And we want to match up our shoulder, our underarm seam. So that's the first thing that I do is I get my underarm seam. And like with our pants, I like to nest that seam and pop a clip in it. And I'm just making sure that everything kind of lines up. I mean, if it's a little bit off, that's fine. You know, with cutting differences, it can be a bit different. Now, when you are sewing this, you really need to make sure your ear is out of the way because you don't want to get your ears stuck in the side seam. So we're just clipping the sides and we'll do that on both sides. And then I'll take it over to my serger and I'm going to serge all the way down my sleeve into my body. Again, making sure that I'm not catching my ear in there. So I will do that and then we'll bring it back and it's nearly the last step. Okay, I've sewn down my sides. Thankfully, I did not catch my bunny ears, but look, so cute. So again, we still got our little 
bung one that kind of goes to the side, but I think it adds character. So just trim this little thread. Okay, so the last thing that we need to sort of sew on here is our neckband. So I've got my neckband here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it in half with the right sides together, and I'm gonna sew down or serge down this short seam, and then I'll come back and we will quarter our neckband. So like we did with our waistband, we're gonna quarter this. So the first thing we're gonna do is fold it in half, and you can press this if you find it a little bit easier because knits do tend to roll. But we're gonna fold it in half with right sides out, so wrong sides are together. And we're going to, with our back seam, find the front half. And like we did before, we're going to pin it. And we're gonna line up that front seam and the pin so that we can find our quarters. So we've got our neck band is quarter now and we're gonna do the same to our neck opening. So I like to grab it and I sort of find, I match up my shoulder seam so that I've got my back piece in half. If your pattern piece sort of indicates it, you can always mark it as well. And then I've got my front piece. And this is probably the most important part of the entire sewing <laughs> journey, I guess, is to make sure you quarter your neckband. So many people I know don't quarter their neckband and they assume that the shoulder seam is a quarter point, but as you'll see, it is not. And it's how you end up with wonky neckbands, you know, you'll have too much at the front, uh, too much at the back, and then you're sort of stretching to make it fit in the front, which just makes it pucker and look awful. Because if you have a look at this, that quarter point sits a good inch in front of the shoulder seam. So if you had assumed that that was your quarter point, you would have had ample room here with your neckband, and you would have been stretching really hard to make it fit at the front. So just please always quarter your neck bands. There are some rules in sewing that can be broken. This is not one of them. So now I line up my neck band. It should be on the outside. Take my pin out, put it back in the color sphere. My daughter gets annoyed with me when I don't follow her color wheel. Then we line up our quarter points again. And again, the reason that I take out the pins and put clips in is because I don't want to overlock over one of my pins. I've done it before and it is not nice. So we now have our neckband lovely and corded so we're only stretching between the quarters. So let's go over to our serger and we will attach our neckband. This is again where I will attach my label. So I like to sew my neckbands from above. So I'll get it all ready. Pop it all under my presser foot. I like to put a couple of stitches on and then I just start to check that I've got it all right. So as long as you have three raw edges aligned, you are good to go. And I usually like to try and have my seam towards the back, but that's okay. So I'm stretching out my quarter. I'm making sure that I've got three raw edges. I tend to try to cut a tiny bit off as I go, just to sort of neaten it up. First quarter done. Lining all these edges up. And it is just a case of kind of moving it all around. And you wanna make sure that you're not catching anything under here. And you absolutely don't need to do this with a serger or an overlock. You can do this with your domestic machine. I just find it a lot quicker with a serger. So we get our last quarter going. 
And also when you come back to the start, make sure your label is flat. The amount of times I've sewn my label up is ridiculous. We are so, so close now. So we've got our neckband attached, got our little ears, still got our funky little shorts over here. Look how cute they are. So the last thing that we need to do is hem everything and top stitch the neckline. Now you don't have to top stitch the neckline if you don't want to. I highly recommend doing it because it really finishes the garment off and just makes it look so much neater. So what I'm going to do is I like to um, top stitch with my cover stitch. So I will take you over to my cover stitch. But you can do it with a twin needle as well. Just make sure that you are using a stretched twin needle, something like this. So it has to say stretch twin needle. I obviously prefer Schmetz and I will link these in the description below as well. So let's go over to my cover stitch and we will finish off our beautiful garment. I am a fan of the wide cover stitch. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that my seam is down and I'm lining up to the edge of my foot. And all I'm doing is going all the way around my neckline. And honestly, go as slow as you need to. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they try to go too fast and they end up with a wonky um, top stitch and they're not happy. But if you go slow, and it's hard to do while you're filming because <laughs> I'm halfway back from the machine. But if you kind of just go really slow, make sure you're following your guides on your foot you should get a really beautiful top stitch. So when you come back around to here, you can trim these top ones, but you wanna make sure that your bottom one is sort of to the side because you do need to tie off your ends. So we just go a couple of stitches over. And then I like to get my very technical duvalaki. And we're going to pull our threads to the front. And then you pull it all out to the back. And as you can see, and I'll give this a good press as well, but it just helps the neckline sit so much flatter. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to fold up our sleeves and hem. So I like to fold it up a good half an inch. The way you can sort of stop it rolling is to have at least half an inch sort of folded under. So I'll take this under here. And I guess the tricky part about a cover stitch is you can't see what you're sewing. You can only see the top. So I tend to feel like I can feel the edge of the fabric is there. So I'm just trying to line that up with the middle so that I know that I'm catching it on either side of my needles. You can also get a fabric guide. I do have a fabric guide for this machine, but I don't always get it out. So I'm pretty good at feeling these days. So again, we're sort of coming back to the start. Go away, pink thread. Trim these top two. Go a couple over, bring up our needles. Super special duvalaki threads forward to cut them and then pull it out to bring those to the back. And then we've caught all our edges. So to finish this off, all you need to do is you grab your four threads. If you're doing a two thread um, cover stitch, you'd have more if you were doing a three thread. And I just tie them off sort of two to three times. like this, clip it near here, and that is your hem done. So I will do the other sleeve and the bottom, and then we can have a look at our final garment. And here we have the most adorable little gift set with matching shorts, all ready to match 
his sister. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to sew your own matching PJ set and I hope this video has given you the confidence to go out and try. Now for the bonus. If you have trouble sewing stretch cotton, also known as knit fabrics, click the link below to get my free copy of my guide, Improve Your Knit Sewing in 30 Minutes or Less. This easy to read guide has practical and simple steps you can implement into your sewing today. So make sure you grab your copy now. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can pop them in the comment box below. And if you want to find me in the virtual world, my socials are listed on screen and also down below in the description box. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get all my tutorials and sewing chats. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.